No, bad, bad, bad. Very bad. I was trying to come up with the quirky... I've done enough damage on Facebook this week though. Uh, where are we? Here we are here. Good afternoon everybody. Are you well? It's it's a little bit silly here. Two o'clock is a very bit important time in the Chandler's Cottage building because today lunch arrived. There was no food in the house. We were out all yesterday. Lunch arrived five minutes ago. I decided that I definitely do have a sinus infection and made a call to the doctor and the only time they had for a telehealth call was two o'clock so I'm standing by for the phone to ring so I can go off and do that phone call and um, Em's here as well so we just thought this will be the day where everything happens at two o'clock and uh, yes and, and there it all goes. Now who's here? Um, okay first of all today we have been honoured with some trollers some 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 gate crashes on our Facebook page so when you see some little comments come through that you go hmm they look a bit strange we are all over it Steve's out there he's going to delete them off it happens every now and then and as you know we love to take that as a compliment that people have noticed that we exist and um, Stephen's on it he will get rid of them so please just ignore them don't click on any of the links and we will uh, have them out of there shortly. Good afternoon, Fiona and Kathy and Christine, 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 sorry, both my gorgeous Christines. Um, hello, Maureen. I had a chat with Maureen this morning. That was really lovely. Hello, Diana. Lovely to hear from you. Um, you're always here now. That's so lovely. Next year, buddy, we are on. Good afternoon, Jeanette. Lovely to hear from you. Denise, hi. Yvonne, hi. Ah, oh, look at all the trolling stuff. Again, ignore it. Hello, Sue. Barbara is here too. Fantastic. Tracy, hey, Megan, what did I see? You're still eating the platter that you started two days ago. Is that correct? Um, Megan, you also need to know. M? Yes, Megan makes a cameo today. Megan makes a cameo today. We have a Megan Lancaster technique being used on the show. True, 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 true. Not just sucking up to it. That is true. Paulette, hello. Christine says, I am watching at my sewing group. <sighs> oh, so all watching. Best behaviour, Emma. Right. Best behaviour. Hello, Deb. Good to hear from you. Kathy. Troll, 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 troll. Troll. Kitty, hi. Yeah, thank you. I, I hope I feel better. I haven't done one of these since I had that big nose surgery mouth thing done last year. So I think I had a little bit of a non-COVID virus thing that hung around for a few days and it's it's still there. We will fix it. I'm so used to it. Hello, Lois, Lynette. Okay, I'm forgetting very romper roomy. Em, are you about ready to... Oh, Lorraine's here and she says she's late. Apology accepted. It was a very busy Easter, Chris, actually. There were some Facebook demos. There was bag making. There was applique sampler there was kit cutting there was be mindful going out the door yes a troll 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 deb you're absolutely right megan's freaking out <laughs> she doesn't know what it is yeah meg hey what happened on show stayed on show yeah that's oh no she taught me this somewhere else oh did she yeah oh, okay uh meg if you are looking and you're laughing and you're seeing meg write things meg is actually a channel's cottage show girl and once you're a channel's cottage show girl you are for life, a Chandler's, a Chandler's Cottage chick. And uh, we miss her dreadfully. She lives too far away. Hello, Cheryl. Uh, Jill Cross says, oh, my all-time favourite quilt. Oh, thank you very really? much, Jill. Is that true? Oh, there you go. Goes way back, way back. Pam, Pam Sturton's here. Hello. 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 Pam, oh, you know what? Sometimes when you seek, may I, oops, I'm taking liberties here, Pam. Sometimes, I mean, we fill orders, as you know, all the time. And every now and then an order comes along and you go, that's a nice order. That's the kind of order I'd place. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got one of those. Thanks, Bronwyn. Yeah, okay, so should we do M's here? She's going to, if that phone rings, I'm going <laughs> to, please, can I please have something for my nose thing? And then I'll come back. So this is, oh, no, you've got to use the right name for it. Yes, that's yes, the whole idea the of the whole label. idea of the label. So there's one in every. Cup. Hey, you don't match the set. I match the set. Oh, I didn't really get the memo. You brought yeah. the quilt. The quilt. 
I think just said nice Anna's the quilt was going to be up today. I can be better. Is that better? Yeah, we'll accept that. <laughs> Uh, oh, but I just ran out and found this. Was you remember? You I had this? black and white on when I arrived. Nah. I do remember shh, that. Shh, shh, I did. Um, yes, change for set. Okay. I bought this at remember from the. They're the Gippsland knitters and, weavers. knitters and weavers. I did. Yes. Spinners, spinners, spinners and, weavers. and weavers. Thank you. Got it wrong. This is. There's, there's one in every crowd. crowd. That's right. So Emma and I did this. Turn it over. No, yes. I don't want to see how long ago it was. Oh, no. What's its vintage? 2007. Oh, my Lord. Our 15 were years. Babies. They were babies. Now one's out there running the website and the business. Yeah. There you go. There are many, many funny stories behind this quilt, but we will risk repeating ourselves if we go through yeah, them today. Not. We're not going to go through them. So, we, I said to Em, let's put this one up today because... It kind of breaks all the rules <laughs> about binding. Isn't that and what we're she, all about? Yeah, yeah, Australians are all about breaking No rules. binding showing on the edge, but Emma is going to walk you through binding and corners and things today, starting and finishing. That's why it's called On the Edge. As always, I think about all these things we want to talk about, and you cannot cram them all into one show. So Emma's going to cover off a lot today, and then... Saturday I'm going to come back and talk more about machine quilting and with stencils as well because Ooh. we've got the opportunity to sell some amazing stencils at a fantastic price from Margaret. So that's going to be Saturday and then Mark's here next Wednesday. Oh, so, no, guest no. appearance. Guest appearance. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, just before we do get stuck in. Where's your product? Oh, there. <laughs> Pam's just gone, wait, there could be more, she's funny. <laughs> there, there's a few so things nice. I've asked Stephen to um, tag today. Actually, he hasn't, I haven't asked him to tag the Turtle Base yet, so I need to do that. If you have ordered a fat quarter pack of these Turtle Bays, we had a little bit of an issue with uh, yardage of one of the fabrics. It was the, the swirly, uh, it's up here, the swirly, whirly, landscapey one that came in the park, I can't show you overhead yet, and put the camera on. You haven't got an overhead camera yet, give me a minute, I'll, okay. I'll get there. When, when, when we switch to a different yeah, yeah, camera, yeah. you can stand so up and not fall over. these either. four are here, but there was one other one that kind of, kind of went with it. It was, you know, the marbly one yes. that we had. So please check your inbox, Steve's actually sending out an email to everyone now saying, would you still like your fat quarter pack? obviously at a much cheaper price with the four fat quarters instead of the five. So please do check your um, your inbox in case that's there. And then, oh look, there's, there's new things coming in but we want to get stuck into quilting. I just, I'm going to show you this one. This is my new Liberty. Oh, well, that's very nice. Do you like that? I do. Snap, what is it with me in the blue at the moment? You are in the blue. I know. Blue, 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 blue. So look, that is absolutely beautiful. So that's a new Liberty that's up. And that's when I remind you, don't forget all of our things that were on sale from the Easter Monday sale are still there. Steve's got a banner scrolling through, or you can just put the word Easter into the search window. And that is there. Okay. Then I went through and also asked Steve to pop into today's uh, show a little collection. Mm. I'm, I'm trying to speak French because Emma bought croissants. What, Steve? Turtle bays? Did you take off the, um, <coughs> yardage. the yardage for the pre -cut? No, I sent you an email that said what I'd cut and how much was left in the email. Uh, there's only five metres each of those left after those little pre cut packs I did. Yep. Who's the boss? <laughs> I'm not the boss. Right, so I went through and found its friends in our North Coast. Solids. Solids. And I, this is really important, and because these particular liberties, like the Sally Kellys, they're not shaded. Mm -hmm. So they work best Solid colors, with yum. solids. So that's the line that goes. So you'll find that in there. That one is called Citron. Mm -hmm. Citron. Put your friend on. Come. My car's moving the accent. I can't do it. <laughs> and then I've been in one of the don't, don't, don't go, don't, don't take me the flashback to the, the Peugeot Citron and the drive back to Madrid. I don't want to do that ever Fast again. Fast and mean. <laughs> All right. 
Then this one is beautiful. We've had this out before with some of the other lovely Sally Kelly and things. And this one is Surf. Speaking of which, Surf and Turf for tea. Surf and Turf? I, I think so. I think you should finish off with a citron tart. <laughs> citron tart. This is Sprout. Oh, yeah. See what I mean? They Sprout's all... on the side of your Surf and Turf. There you go. Look at that. They're all in love. So, you know. The perfect combo for me, and there are brownie points. We do applaud some orders when they come in. Mm. Um, someone bought some, one of their Sally Callies the other day. They bought a metre, and then they bought half metres of the solids, and we went... Smart, yes. Take a bow. Take a bow. We don't have any blacklist orders, though, do we? We, we, no, do, no, we, we do sometimes ring people and go, Hey, this is this going together? in the same quilt? Mm, no. So I'll leave those there for you to play with. Uh, what else did I need to tell you? If you were waiting for Rainbow Applique Central Packs, they are cut and back in stock. There's a new one too. New what? A new oh, Apple yes. Case. And this is, well, this is the teal, but it's kind of new it's and improved. It's, yes. it's new and improved. So this, <laughs> yes, this is the new pack. I do rather like that. I'm trying to think what I changed in the pack. It must be very close to the old one. That's what Stephen asked you before. He did ask me, didn't he? And I'm going, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. I can't remember. But it is very close. But we haven't had those. I had to wait for a petite to come in. That's uh, why they haven't been here. So they are back. And if you love this one that's on the top, please remember that on its own in yardage is on, or is on special. Bottom fell out. It's, what was that about? It's a Andy? sheer skill packing those off, Emma. Well done. Um, hey, where's my purse? I'll go find my purse. No, I'll find your purse. You Where is it? Talking. Is it on the kitchen table? I'll find it. Go find my purse. All right, now, soiree as well. Um, very, very excited now. Very nervous and getting very excited. Well, how many people are coming? So uh, I think. Oh, I can't remember how many spots there are left. I'm not even going to. I'm not even going to say it because, in case I've got it wrong. But in case you missed it, Karen's Saturday project, her beautiful little basket here. All of the kits are here. Actually, she brought all the kits down, and I taught them to Mark's kitchen table. No, we looked on the kitchen table. I think they're. I think it's in my ensuite. <laughs> no, I, so I was talking to Mum. So, while putting makeup on. And that's her Sunday project. I know difference in size, but the value and the fabric that go into them, with you when you get there and you see them, it will make sense. I was saying to Margaret, it's only little. With this one, you get the most gorgeous little bag of crushed walnut shells to use to go in. So it's really solid. Uh, you will see on this. Uh, you will see. Um, I sent Cass the photos of Margaret's beautiful pin cushion that she's running on the Saturday. So that will go up on the Soiree Facebook page and then I'll share it across onto ours as well. But it's absolutely stunning. It's stunning. And hers is built and padded out round an actual piece of hardwood. So it's it's really different. I love it. So that's those. Now Em's got... I don't know where my bag is. That Just to remind you, that is my little Sunday project. Phone still hasn't run. That is my little Sunday project. So that's the little needle keeper so those that are coming to the soiree your um your ticket your ticket includes your whole kit for this tuition your yummy high tea and a sit and sew with us for the day so you get in case you don't know you get three projects included in your price each day so if you're coming on the sunday i really it's it's a wall i will go find it while you're on the phone for your telehealth <laughs> just, just wander around, around and, and retrace your steps so sunday if you were coming sunday for example you would have this pincushion kit, and you would have this kit, needle book. needle book, and Margaret's project, which I can't tell you about yet. Mm -hmm. I know what she's doing, but I can't tell you about yet. So she will show us next week when she's here. Making her camera yes. on her. Yes, so I'm going to put that back up. Um, and Emma has done something rather cheeky and amazing with a leftover fabric from the needle book, but I'll show you later. It's up there, but I'll show you later. All right, I'm going to go find my other project. Take oh, this and put it back. And, and, and when, I, when you skip out, then you're going to skip in when I change Yeah, yeah, and then cool. you're going to put your camera on. <laughs> Did I miss anyone? Do you stuck crushed walnuts? Marie, I don't, but I know there's a 
two great big boxes of them waiting for the soiree so I can come back to you on that. I'm sure I can get you some. Sylvia Trench is coming both days. Why not? Why I not? Say, She's why making not? a weekend of it. Oh, Fiona. Oh, Fiona's dog ate a bag of crushed walnut shells once. Is it a beagle? I had a beagle. <laughs> Beagles eat anything. Hello, Petra. Judy V's in the building too. Hi, but Lisa, newspaper. I'll go and read all of these. What are you all doing? I'll go read all of these. Oh, Nancy Cook says, hi, Emma. <laughs> Hello, Nancy. All right, it's all yours. I think we're good afternoon. My brain isn't quite in, in the zone yet. Yes, Megan, you're in the spotlight. It's your, it's, well, it's your name's up in lights today. Let me know when you're ready and I'll go find the bag. Okay. Sorry, I did just have to go and find a black bobbin because I would like to sew in a way I never do where I make my stitching really stand out so that you can see exactly what I'm doing and I knew that the light box would be out of shot, sorry, temporary little jump out of shot there. Because we're going to, we're going, a little bit of leftovers from Lisa's last little video. We're going, we're going into outlaw land. We're going to be labelled, bound and hung. So I'm going to show you a few things today that people ask me about often and that people have emailed Lisa about as well. So I'll just pop that last little thing away. Lisa did peel back the label on our quilt before. And this is one that I consider to be a fancy label because we've got a pieced background which is reflected from the front of the quilt. It's got a bound edge around the label. It's probably a bit tricky to see to get contrast but there's a separate piece of fabric around the outside edge and it's actually quilted around the outside and then it's beautifully uh, beautiful calligraphy or penmanship has written it and a number of people have asked me how do I do that because I don't really I don't like my handwriting and I always feel a bit nervy about committing to writing with a a Pigma pen, a pigment ink pen. Lisa has them in stock. Um, on your fabric, at a stage, I always like to write my label as a separate entity and then put it on. Um, I've done a few things here today to show you how I do it or how to do different kinds of labels. So, what am I going to show? I'll show you a couple as well before I can find power to the light box. Power to the light box. Power to the light box. Did you find your bag? Sure. Yes. Oh, that's good. Got the light box? Got the light box? Mm. <laughs> it's a um, skinny, see that skinny? skinny one that's all tangled up under this the one here? Has that got a funny, that's it. Okay. Do you believe me? Yeah, I do. I believe that. Yep. Right. I'll fix that up. I'll go okay. and fix it. Right. So here's what we do. We oh, look, there's my preview. Excellent. I can see what I'm looking so at. So do you want that now? And then Not I yet. can go fix your camera. Oh, actually, I will, because I'll go to that. Mm -hmm. I won't do that. We, we don't make it up as we go, really. You ready? There you go. And we can see my dirty light box. Oh, you need an alcohol swab or three. Look, there we go. Yep. I'll probably turn it off three times before I get there. All right. Here's another, oh, this is a Megan quilt. Megan was part of this group. I'm not actually showing you the quilt, but I'm showing you another label. This label. <laughs> you know what? Has a monkey climbing up a ladder <laughs> opposite me just to scare me. Uh, which way? This way. This label. This quilt was actually a challenge quilt. We were all given about this much of this piece of is fabric. Is that all? Yep. Because we weren't to use this fabric in this quilt. That's a Peggy Tool Florentine. It is. But it, uh, the story of the, the quilt is written here. Right. And I can't for the life of me write that nicely, so I use cheeky things. And we had to use quilt fat colours out of this fabric. So it's a very ugly quilt, also known as the curry quilt by 
some people because if you put it on the, uh, the dinner table for the curry, you'd never see if there was a <laughs> spill on it. Yes. All right, so you're all good now. You've got... Yeah. I've just got to rearrange my scarf. It's ridiculous. Okay, so how do I do it? How do I get the nice writing? Well, today we're going to make our, our feature project or our, our feature target today is to label, bind and hang. And it's for Friends of Chandler's Cottage. It's by me in 2022. That's what I like to include on a quilt label. And I'm going to switch again to... Yeah. No. There we go. On here we've got the name of the quilt. Designed and created by Lisa Chandler and Emma Bowman, July 2007. So always I am putting in a name of my quilt, who it's for, that's not on there because we didn't know who it was for, it's, it's for my linen cupboard actually, who it's by and when because one day in a long time from now when we're gone someone might want to know when and where and who and how and that quilt where I showed you the piece of bind, the piece of fabric on the side, that's got the story of who was participating and what the challenge was and this is how I do it. So I've printed in fancy fancy writing and I'm actually doing this as a, a corner label so I will sneak it into my with my binding as I sew it on and I use my light box and yes I'm writing upside down but it really doesn't matter because I'm actually tracing, I'm not writing. If I was doing it for myself, not for watching, not for showing you so much, although you can't really see because my hands are in the way, I would be very concentrated and I would be doing it up the right way. But as quilters, we do some amazing things, some amazing brain yoga when we're reversing patterns, writing upside down. And as a mum, I'm sure you've read, or a grandma or an auntie, I'm sure you've read storybooks upside down and sideways. But in order to get that fancy schmancy writing that I can't do freehand, free I envy people who have beautiful handwriting lots of M's and N's in my name and so it's really messing with my head. So I've written my name and then I would go the outline of the big heavy letters and then I would actually come back later I would go and sit in front of the television and colour them in so that I get that solid look because I wanted it to look a bit like a wanted poster labelled, bound and hung we've been labelled as quilters we're bound to be in trouble and we want our quilts to hang flat and we will be hung if, we don't, if they don't So that's how I would do, I'll move the paper out of the way so that hopefully you can, I'll put the paper back in, you can just see that I have actually traced out the outside of the letters and then I would just go back and colour them in. And you may not believe this but light box is brilliant even for use sometimes on black if you're using I love to use the chalk paper that Lisa's got but sometimes you just need to trace something really particularly and if you turn off all the lights at night and just have you and your light box having an intimate moment you can actually use your light box to see through black fabric no. but there, that's how I do my fancy schmancy labels so I would fill in all the rest of it but I just create my label on the printer on the computer and then print it and that's that's my trick 
A couple of girls have asked how I get nice writing. I don't write nice. That's just what I get. So, I found it. You found it? You found the purse? You found, what else did you find? Did you find anything else fun? You, it was in the other bathroom. You only made it halfway up. Oh, I went all the way to the ensuite. Whereabouts was it? It was there. Okay. And I'm going to show you another label. This is a Matilda's medallion. It's the original. Another label technique. Sorry about that, Chief. Where I have used scrap fabric wrong way scrap fabric see there's my my dodgy handwriting and I think I need to go over it again and of course it's not actually called Matilda's medallion in this it's called the combo billabong ball, ballroom glad you didn't wear yeah that. I wouldn't have been able to do that for love or money where Banjo Waltz Matilda, because my daughter is Matilda, for whom the original quilt was made. But these are all just leftover scraps from the... Can you just turn my phone over? I have no idea what it's doing. It's a reminder of some sort. Um, um, the, the, they're just leftovers from the front of the quilt, and I've just done it like a crazy patch style, written on my piece in the middle and then scrapped out. That's my label. <clears throat> so another that's just another variation on doing labels. I'm not you can, you can cut back can, to me. Yeah, can I? Do you want to talk to the girls again? Yeah. What else? I'll oh, show them the bag. Do it. This is my Saturday project. So nerve-wracking showing them. <laughs> this is my Saturday project for the soiree. So. I've taken our coin purse frames, and it's really hard to photograph, and because it's all silvery shiny. Would you like me to take the shiny. light box out of the scenario? Because oh, I, I don't need it again. You're done? Yeah. I'll need a letter on for my Be Mindful Girls. Okay, there you go. So that is, that is what we are doing on the Saturday. So I've tried to combine a lot of little techniques into one little project. You good with that? Yes. He... I like that unlike, in a little project. Look, unlike our trinket purse and the coin purse, he has a square base with a bottom. So he's going to have a little dark bottom. And this actual section in here, the panel I've put in, we're going to do this with reverse applique. Mm -hmm. With freezer paper and a glue pan. And it's actually really easy to do. But I wanted to cram as much in. I'm probably most nervous about the fact that I have done some embroidery. And Emma is the embroidery queen here, not me. I didn't look closely when I oh, put thank it you. in the frame. <laughs> so, so we're just going to do a little bit here. Running stitch, whip stitch, daisy chain, some little beads on. But the whole thing that I really want to get across is how to do this really easily with the reverse. Uh, and then even, I've even gone around and, and stem stitch around a beautiful variegated thread that we've got hold of for the soiree. So there you go. That's my little... Saturday project, you know, we have all these ideas of things we want to do, and then you go, but okay, what can we achieve? What can we achieve? We don't need to achieve the whole thing, but I really want everyone to be able to, through the day, pull each project open out, it up, open it up, the pattern. go, yes, I can do that, no, gustle, no, um, <laughs> find, find whoever's project it is, because we'll be walking the room, we'll be mingling. Working the room? Working the room with my purse <laughs> work, on. Work that crowd. Um, so that we know that when you go home at the end of each day, you're comfortable. And, you know, if you like silver and you're going to stay over somewhere, you can go back, put your feet up, do a cup of coffee, a little party, glass of wine, <laughs> and keep going. So, but I like I like the shape. It's sort of like a it's huge, a bit nouveau-y. Mm -hmm. And, oh, the most important thing, it's in the new grey. Oh, of course it is. It is in the only grey in, in the country that all got chopped up into the kits for the soiree. There's only a little bit left. I showed the girls on the bowl. Oh. That's where it all is. Oh. I know. That's so a bit of a yesterday. prestige. I know. Yeah. So it's got sort of a little bit of a history because this is the newest small floral on the front. And then inside we have the out of print, very little left, original green. Oh, the apple green. So that's it. I want one in black now, sorry. I want a black oh, one. Does, does black the new one. black with the pink? 
You could fussy cut. I showed that to the girls yesterday. I mean, once you've got the pattern. Oh, we know. And we'll have the extra coin purse frames there, mm -hmm. I suppose. Yes, but, but the, the new one shop. with the pink, it, does it come in the small floor? Not, Not yet. Mm, watch the space. Can I just have the piece of paper that you were copying? Which piece of paper? This piece of paper? Why? Oh, your hand made it it's on It's got to have two L's, doesn't it? <laughs> Thanks, Steve. I just looked at it on the label <laughs> and I'm like, that needs two L's. <laughs> Lab lead. Off you go. I'm staying See, I it. should be hung. Uh, that's it. We're living on the edge today. Did someone comment? <laughs> no. No? Fiona says she'd like to come both days. She's trying to make a plan to swap her Saturday night shift. You go, girl. Yeah. Ooh, I don't know how much power can she... No. How many cans of I don't know. <laughs> no, so, no, she can't go straight through. All right, what are we doing next? What are we doing next? We, we're going to... We're, we're continuing to talk about label and, mm -hmm. and curvy and binding. Mm -hmm. So curvy edge. I oh, see there's a use, a use for wearing black today. I can We are show so you clashing that. badly. I know. We? Get out of the shot. You, mm -hmm. you work really well with the quilt, not me. <laughs> so... I do have my curvy edge on my label that is missing an L. It's funny, Steve saw it at the same time as me. Now, in order that I have a finished edge to work with when I'm going to hand sew that down onto the back of my quilt, I usually put some kind of binding. On Lisa's and my quilt, this would have been bias cut binding, probably left over from somewhere up here because we've got all sorts of random bias cut binding in there. And I'm going round curves, so that's what I've done here. Here's my selvage, so you can see I have cut it on the bias, but I'm not pressing it in half with the iron. I am just going to jump over to number two and show you and grab my pins this week I actually have them usually I forget pins or clips or something I have tried very hard what I do with my bias cut binding it is two and a half inches wide it's probably a little bit wider than I might use for the edge of a binding but my brain was still in binding the quilt mode and I put, not that one, thank you. I put a few pins in, but I'm not pressing the edge. Not pressing the fold. And that is just to keep it soft for when I wish to turn it over. So, one day I'm gonna slide right off this chair. I swear, okay, I am. And Mr. Machine wants to know which foot I've got on. I'll tell you that I've got the number 50 foot, the walking foot. Thank you. <coughs> because Lisa has kindly put the straight stitching plate in for me and told the machine that that's what's in there so, so that I can't accidentally break anything. Oh switching stitches. So I'm just steering my binding around to match the curve on the edge of mine. Now this could be the curved edge of a quilt, not necessarily the curved edge of a label. And this is essentially the same technique that we used for the edge of our there's one in every crowd, every crowd quilt, which is not the um, pet name it has. We do have a different name, which is much shorter for it, so that when Lisa sends me random text messages late in the evening and says, bring that quilt, I knew exactly where to go. Admittedly, it is a little bit thinner than a lot of the quilts in my linen cupboard, so it had managed to um, require a little bit of an archaeological dig. I have managed to go to the back of the linen cupboard. So 
So the only other time that I might, or one of the other times that I might use bias cut binding would be if I had a quilt with an uneven edge instead of straight, straight edges and 90 degree corners. Now because it's still soft, I haven't pressed that edge. It's still quite nice and soft there. When I do press it from here, it will flex into its own little position. So I can press that. Now Lisa has got the iron here for me. And we got three. And we go on board. press on the seam first. It's very hot. Let me turn it down a little. And I can gently press it out. And yes, remember I did intentionally put black thread in, so you might see little glimpses of black teeth, but it's so that for some of the other things we're doing today, you can actually see exactly where I've stitched. Now if I had pressed that binding in half prior to, come on, you got to shrink up, buddy. I want a little mist. Stay, sit, stay. It's probably a little bit too wide for that curve, but you can also then see that I can neatly turn it back over and get a beautiful finished edge. If that was my quilt. So I've just done one side where, if that was the edge of my quilt, now I've got my binding showing. Now on our fish quilt, we took the binding all the way to the back. It was narrower to start with. Because this extra bulk, as you can see, is a little bit tricky. And the other trick with your bias cut binding is to get out your little water spray, give it a spritz and then hit it with the nice hot iron again because it then wants to shrink again and then pull up again. So there is our bias bound edge where the binding has gone all the way to the back. There's the other side where I've kept the binding on the front. So they're just some little tips and tricks for bias cut binding. And if I go to one and me, back to me. And sneaking labels into the corners of quilts. This is my little faux quilt. I've got a little nest of thread on there that I whipped up for to purpose of today. Now I've just randomly quilted it. There's some interesting things sneaking labels onto quilts without labeling. I have written my name on my quilt but if you see I've also written Lisa's name on my quilt. And I have done that recently with a quilt that was essentially double-sided for a little person who arrived. And I quilted his name and my name and the year that he arrived in. And his parents thought it was a great little challenge to find those things because they weren't all together. They were in different spots on the quilt. But to be able to find his name written into his quilt, and he has a very unusual name, so they thought that was great. Okay, here is how 
I sneak my binding, my label, <coughs> excuse me, onto my quilt. Actually, I will sneak it onto the back. That's a good idea. And, ha, no rotary cutter. Yes, rotary cutter. Looking for the wrong colour. In this instance, my quilt is not big enough for my label, but you will understand the purpose of the exercise. <coughs> Excuse me. So, under here, oh, I'm going to need more than ironing board again. Binding. So this one I have ironed in half and I'm going to use Lisa's Edge. She's got the edge on this one. What she does is cuts her fabric at a 45 degree angle, folds down a quarter of an inch and that is the leading edge on her binding. So when it comes to binding to enclose your label in, meaning you'll only have one edge left to sew down. Oops, yeah, no, that's right. No, front, front to back. I usually baste this on so that it stays in place. And then I come to the front of my quilt and start my binding and I'm going to come away from that leading edge and pin in there and a pin in there. So I have actually sandwiched my quilt between my binding and my label. My label's on the back and my binding's on the front. And now I'm going to come over to number two. Lisa's so practiced at this and I haven't done it in weeks, so bear with me. Now, for Lisa's technique, we do have, put my fabric in the right spot for you, and get the right light is the all important. She does a little bit of stitching here from beginning of before the binding and then stops and then comes down here past the pin about an inch past where the fold opens up. So I'm going to do a sneaky little bit of stitching up the top. Just to hold that in place. coming down past the opening of the fold and one of the things that we were recently asked to show again was turning those mitered corners so I stop before a quarter of an inch before the edge of the quilt, take my quilt entirely out, bring the binding up in a straight line, my sandwich has got a little bit skewy, so that I have one continuous straight line from here through here. So that's my little fold to get my mitered corner and then I fold it back down again keeping that line straight with a little bump at the top which is level with the top edge. So this folded edge here is level with the top edge, the top raw edge there. And that gives you just enough fold to get a lovely mitre around the corner and I'm going to carefully just pick it up a smidge and so the feed dogs don't push it all out of alignment. 
and you can start sewing from the edge, right from the edge, you don't start a quarter of an inch in, start all the way at the edge and just going to whistle on here a little way. And then we're going to talk about why, 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 we join our binding strips on the diagonal. I have got all sorts of different colours, but I did intentionally choose things that were prints, so they're lighter on the wrong side. I did have some batiks, but it makes the Megan Lancaster option just a little bit tricky. Now, in order to find my, my true bias, I don't have any selvages. I've already chopped them off. And I'm going to come to camera three. And you can either don't drag it, you can press it with the iron or you can, as I say, cold iron it where you're giving the crease a nice press with the, usually the back of your rule because if you slide it, it slides better because it doesn't have the um, etchings in it and if it's a creative grids ruler, definitely want the back side because it's got that rough finish which holds it in place beautifully when you're wanting to cut but if you wanted to do a cold press just Flip your iron over and then you're not dragging it with the moisture of your finger or the grip of your finger, you're just sliding that cold iron over it. If you don't have a um, little wooden iron, I know some ladies have those. So I'm going to, for the purpose of the exercise, pop a pin in, or even do two. If you wanted to, you could use a Frixian marker and mark that 45 degree angle. And I bet this one's not going to work just to... Oh no, it does. And we're going to pop back over here. And I'm going to stitch this is probably lots of things that ladies already do. Most quilters already do. Um, the reason we join our binding on the bias instead of buttered ends is that it makes for a much smoother bound edge because it spreads it spreads the thickness across two inches or two and a half inches. When it comes to being folded, I've got some of the seam here, 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 and there's the, the last fold there. So I don't have, I'm not gonna switch, I'm just gonna talk to you while I'm gone. I don't have the bulk all in one place that would, would result from doing this. Now I have three lots of four, I've got 12 layers of fabric here on this side or I would have, even if I press them open, I would have eight layers of fabric in one place and if you think about the fact that when we're binding you actually have your binding seam allowance turned in and then go around your quilt and you've got all of that thickness there you will end up inadvertently with a big fat bit that's much harder to deal with so let's do a little Lisa unpick here and I'll iron it 
find that edge again. And this edge here. So that's why we join on the bias. Now Lisa's, Lisa's edge, where we started up here, just here, and then we came down an inch lower. When it comes to going around that corner and coming back, I'm going to have another piece of, oh, I haven't done it yet, but I will show you, that here. We would be trimming this to a quarter of an inch. I feel like I'm trashing Lisa's set with so many bits and bobs going on. And straight cut binding, so yes, I would be. Hi. Hello. Did you miss me? Have you been gone? I've been gone. Are you done? Yes. Oh, that's good. Yes. For those that live in Bo Morris. What do you know? There is a gorgeous new GP. Oh, hello. At, at the... Uh, at, uh, Key Street? That's nice. It's Bo, Mar Bo Morris Medical Clinic. Gorgeous new GP. I just spoke to her then. Oh, lovely. Lovely. I love it. Is I love the good telehealth chat. <laughs> Is it rain? Is it, or is it just the, the plants? Do you want me to go and look? I, what I camera do you want? Um, Can I take over? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> no. What's happening? What's Ooh. happening? Ooh. Well, we've got Lisa's edge. You're on overhead shot. Yes. I haven't done an overhead shot yet. There you I'm go. Closer. Lisa's edge. Lisa's leading edge. And and I'm actually going to um, show the girls a bit of a, um, a Megan Lancaster momentarily. <laughs> <laughs> Here you come, Meg. <laughs> um, you know, Emma, I feel a road trip coming on. It's a long way. How it long does it take way. to get there? We but don't need to say Megan, where, but... Look, Megan, how long does it take to get there? How long does it take to get... Sorry, to I've just got to um, get Shrek in my what? head. How long is... No, that's Madagascar. How long is this going to take? I not to know. Uh, while you're doing that, what are the girls up to? I don't know, but do I tell you? <laughs> she's on my mess today. I can't think straight. Oh, hey, I've got a sinus infection. It's here, and when I put my head down, I feel like my head's off. Oh, the the water balloon head. Oh, Petra. Petra. Our Petra van der Moosdijk. Our Petra. Right. Yes. Sent this lovely email to Steve and I. We're very concerned about our shoulders. Five oh, hours, Megan says. That's a long way. I it's did not. four and a half to Brighton. If, if it's a beer at the only pub, I'm fine with it. Um, Shh. Undisclosed location. Petra, Petra, sorry, Petra sent this lovely email about, about your shoulders. Stephen, uh, shoulders with cutting and that we should get an electric cutter, but she didn't know. That's what we used. We, uh, no, we did. You haven't seen it. Have you seen it? No. Is, oh. there, is there a new toy and you haven't shown it? There is a big new dangerous toy you've got to use your chainmail glove with. So, Steve, went, we went and got chainmail gloves from the butcher supplier. Oh, what did that want? This is so good. Yes, yeah, so Petra, that was very nice of her and uh, Megan. <laughs> what? She said it's five hours with no loose stop. Oh. So it's kind of more like six because there'd be yeah, loose stop, have... bakery stop, coffee stop. Coffee and shop. That's at least many... two ma coffee and macaron stops. How many? Hello, Grandy. How many um, patchwork shops on the way? Uh, Louise, <laughs> that Steve, would make it a, Steve yeah, loved. Eight hour trip. L L Louise was really funny. She sort of put a comment on her order. Louise Atchison. Yeah. Hello, Louise. She's. It was almost like. Sorry, I had I had I had golf early Monday morning, so I'm ordering late. She felt the need to explain. Steve, I thought that was funny. Hello, Anne. Oh, geez. it was really funny. They make excuses. Okay, would you like me to do the Megan Lancaster now? Sure. Okay. So I'm going to pretend. Have a headshot. Without burning myself on the eye. Oh, right, that's right tricky. Ahead. There you go. I'm... So this is Megan. This is not me. This is you round here. Right. 
and this is Megan here. Right. So I'm just going to jump over to the machine and, and start my binding here with a really long tail. With a really long tail. Oops. Don't stand on the cords. Um, okay, so the other thing... <laughs> toys, toys, I'm toys. I'm scared. I, can I go now? Toy. Now it's not a toy. It's a very serious thing, but I need to show this for Petra. So... You did bring the gloves in too, didn't you? Okay. So the reason that Petra, because you know how much cutting that you do, and I'm doing it because I'm a lefty with our shoulders, and Steve and I cut a lot. What this means is, is that we can offer a lot more pre-cuts. Because... I'll just stick with packing them nicely. Because we're going to save our shoulders and it's quicker for us to cut. And I don't like having to put, or allow for, or when I buy, pre-cut packs. And they're really expensive because of the premium, premium that people have to put on them because of the amount of time it takes for a shop staff or a fabric company to cut them. So this was important for us so that we could offer a lot more pre-cuts because with the new website, we still haven't uploaded all of our fabrics as pre-cuts. There's no oh under Lord. the Australian sun or anything up. So that's what we need to do. And Stephen's pretty happy with the toy. He's pretty happy with the toy. But it is a very dangerous toy and it demands great respect. And I had another class with uh, Margaret yesterday. It looks scary. It's very scary. It's also good for cutting wool. And remember I've said that. Yes, I know what you're talking about. Have you seen the wool out there? No. Yeah. No, I just thought you were talking about the Soiree Project. Oh, in, in what? In the needle book. Because it's got the little needle. <laughs> no. Do you want to see a sample of our new wool that we're getting in? If you wish, Jellyfish. Okay, fish. Yeah, I'll leave you with the girls. I'll go and do it. Okay, I'm coming back to overhead. Oh, yes, that iron is right in the danger zone. Okay, so this is now the infamous Megan Lancaster technique. Megan taught me this a long time ago when we were both part of school tea tarts. Now, so I've got my tail. That I, that's where I started and I left a long tail. Sometimes I'll leave that up to 8 inches long, not 18, 8 inches long. And I've come all the way around and I've got this gap. Now I know my binding is cut at 2.5 inches and I know I had my little trust handy dandy ruler and I find and mark, sometimes I'll mark with a pin, sometimes I'll mark with friction. I'll mark the centre of, you know what, I've left the, haven't left the gap big enough. Don't, don't come too far or back around the corner when you're coming around to meet up at the beginning of your game. What have you got? What have you got? We're on an overhead camera. Wow, oh, well, they can't see me. So, I will mark a centre mark. Now this bit doesn't have to be accurate, the next bit does. So I'm approximately at four and a half, so I need to mark two and a quarter Oops. inches. So there's my, no, can I go to camera three? Sure. Cost you. Ooh. We've done this before. So I've marked halfway. Now my binding is two and a half inches, just to double check. I am, actually you can even do it this way. I need to go halfway past half of it. So half of my binding is one and a half inch, one and a quarter, one and a quarter. So I will make a mark at one and one quarter that way and one and one quarter that way. This is the Megan way. This is the Megan way. So there's my centre mark, there's my one and a quarter that this one needs to come past that way and my one and a quarter that this one needs to come past Ooh. that way and here's where the scissors come to the fore so this one has to go past the halfway mark up to the one and a half so they actually cross over for the same length that they are wide right and they can be a little bit snug. You'd prefer them to be a bit snug than too loose. So there and there. Yeah. 
so I've got my two tails. Yeah. This is why I didn't use batik. Now take the two tails and spread them open and put them at the, a 45 degree or a perpendicular angle. You got pin story? Actually, yeah. what I will do first, remember we cold pressed before, girls? So I'm going to cross them over like that. So I am going to do a little Lisa unpick a bit further. I would like a crease with my cold iron. I introduced the girls to my cold iron before. I'm a bit worried. Are you worried? What are you worried? Anne Field says she's looking forward to the dark blue under the Australian sun. Did I miss did I miss a design maybe? Dark blue. Oh maybe she means the teal. She might mean the teal. Oh yes. The delicious With teal. the Boritas. Yes. I am going to mark this as well just so the girls can see it. This is me being left handed. Do I look as coordinated as you? No, no. because I'm left handed. I can tie shoelaces. This is the way Bernadette does hers too, by the way. Who's Bernadette? Who's Bernadette? Oh, this is Bernadette. Is she telling us this on, on the comments? Yeah. And I do like to pin this because I like to audition it and know that I've got it right. What are you laughing at? And to Pam Stanton's a crack up. She's a bit excited we can now cut. No <laughs> pre-cuts. <laughs> uh, let me not tell you about my daughter and pre-cuts. She's decided she can patchwork. All right. Okay, so I've that. actually, there's my, my 45 degree angle. I don't know if you can see it all. Look at that. But you can see, if I gently pop it in, you can see that it's going to work. Yeah. So I will go over to my machine. All right. And that's why I say I, sometimes I leave a really big, do you want to come and show the girls fun stuff? You bet I do. You bet I do. Was that telly selly enough for you? You bet I do. Steak knives. Stephen and I have come into contact. Do I need to go home? An amazing <laughs> supplier that we've discovered that sells the most beautiful wool. As right. in wool blanketing wool. Oh, wool blanketing? But feel, feel this. Uh, you can't feel this. Feel this. Yum. You know what this is? This And what excites me about this, it covers, it ticks all the boxes. There you go, there's the other line. Oh my lord. I think you need to go and join the campaign trail I, with those crazy I, uh, people that we I, have to vote I, for. My television ban starts tonight. Oh, I'm with you. Yeah, no television. We're sick of it. Uh, because what happens is, and it's about, I mean, I'm still sewing and doing things, but I just feel I'm not getting anything. I feel like I don't need to watch. No. Now I'm up to watch. Don't need to watch a train crash. I've watched episode four of Outlander because I haven't seen this new series, and I'm going to stop there. That's it. No more uh, for at least a week. But this no more telly selling. Um, this <laughs> this ticks all the boxes. I want to show it to you up close because it is recycled. What? It is recycled wool. What kind of wool? That's, I don't know. It's 100% wool. How do you recycle wool? I don't know, but it's been recycled. But I want to know. It's been re-spun. Wow. So it's all done from off-cuts and everything that has not made it into clothing, not made it into horse blankets, picnic blankets, all those sorts of things. It's all this company collects it all, and they re-spin it. So it's and all, dye it. And dye it. And this is what you get. So do they dye the... You don't know the story, just, stop asking the no, questions. No, I don't know that they're going to tell me, but I've seen all the certified stuff. So this colour is just drop-dead gorgeous. And um, we can get black. Wow. And we've also got this amazing That royal explains blue. why it kind of feels a little bit felted. It feels felted. It's, it's, do it's you know what it reminds firm. me of? It reminds me of the re... Chris Field and Wait Jackson's that. friend that yes. did all those beautiful bags we had at the exhibition and she'd taken old jumpers and stuff and felted them. It's got that feel. Mm. But check that colour. Now. <laughs> they also do wovens. So, so I, do they dye it? 
as yarn then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look at it. So you can see why I had to have the pink, the black, and I've got the blue out there. I don't know if you can see that well enough. I don't know, but it is vibrant and beautiful and tartan. So I had to have this for moi because I had to have a cape <laughs> for winter. Bring out my skirt. So, but this for applique and bags and wool, I just think it's going to be beautiful. Yeah. This, interestingly, was a discovery that we made on our journey with cutters because mm. in this industry they use the cutters the, all the time. They can't them. rotary cut. So there no. you go. So stay tuned. Okay, take your wool. I've I'm got to finish to, the, the Megan we, Lancaster. We're going to mix and match it up with Sue Spargo Felton oh, and okay. Applicayan. I know, it, it just doesn't want to stay around my neck. <laughs> I need to I can see you trying to catch it over your shoulder. Some, some beads or something. All right, I'm out of the way. Okay, I'm going to come back to here so that you can see what I have done. I have stitched that. This is one of the reasons why I like to leave an eight inch tail because a big gap here is much easier to work with because you can get your quilt right out of the way and have your tails under your needle on your machine, wrong way, this way, with more space here. So long tails, more space here, much easier to work with. So this is my Megan Lancaster technique. And again, it's joining with A diagonal seam so we're dispersing that bulk and I can come back and chop off my excess because I know it fits and then I would in my usual way give it a sneaky press and yes I have bound with all sorts of odds and sods of binding today so that you could see the difference but you can see there that it fits beautifully I'm just going to jump over to the machine the iron is right in front of the switch box so it's a little bit tricky reaching around sorry chief I'm back no oh you're back already where have you been uh, because Marie asked a question oh what did she ask oh I'm we're we're on the machine you were on the machine so, so we can Marie, see that it fits yeah. beautifully like you're under a toasty blanket. I am because Marie just asked if, if it makes her itchy. Because wool makes her itchy. I think it's still wool, it's wool. It wool makes me itchy. It's not it's not rough, it's not scratchy. It's not rough Marie like if you were going to wear it. No but I wouldn't want it I mean it's probably soft enough for a scarf. I know what I wouldn't do with it. I want a dress. Well, you're binding we'll today. Shift. You're binding. So I'm thinking, I want a blanket and I'd like binding. some under the Australian sun, please. A bit of Melbourne binding. Sorry. I love a little evil thought there. <laughs> uh, where are we? So you can see that my binding fits beautifully with my start and finish. So that's how I do the Megan Lancaster start and finish technique and then bringing it over of course to the front and our hands, actually the back, sorry, we've done the, the, the traditional machined onto the front and then bringing it over to the back where our label is, our label is, go the right way, with an L missing. And then because we've done that corner beautifully, we can stitching, 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 and I do actually tend to, before I do the hand stitching in the corner, pick up the next edge, because I will go that way around the quilt, pick up the next edge, and then bring down the first edge, so that I can feel the bulk of the fold is underneath here, and on the top here, sorry, underneath here, and on the top, use the hemostats. The bulk of the fold is under here on the back and it's on the top over here. 
means again we're dispersing the bulk. I don't have it all sitting under this bottom corner. Now, when I learnt to quilt, the quilt police used to say you wanted fat full binding. So to me, I'd actually want to pull it further in, but I don't. I usually use two and a quarter inch cuts. Correct. But for today's exercise, and then if I was using two and a quarter inch cuts, when I was using the Megan Lancaster join, I would cross over my marks that I've ironed off now, would cross over by one and one eighth because I'm chopping that two and a quarter in half. Right. You're on again. And I'll go around the corner and come I just wanted to um, have a moment. As you do. Ooh. So, I'm liking the binding you'd like on your quilt, on your blanket. See, look. Can we cut it on the bias and do 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 you a lovely cape in the round? You can, if you wish. Uh, down the fish, but I, what what we will do? So we we bought we bought samples. What you always do, you you get representative samples so that you are sure before you make. A large commitment. A large commitment. I imagine that it would be a substantial commitment. But um, this is. Uh, what was I going to say? This is uh, just over a metre wide. Really? So, yeah. It's just over a metre wide. It looks what? The tartan. The tartan's bigger. Ah, that's what. But this is just over a metre wide. But I think for bag making and things, that'll be fantastic. But I would like, say, a rug in this, just mm. even a metre meter by two, just to lay over the couch or something. Oh, nice. right, yeah. So it's nice and warm. Or a cape. Um, now, ask me how much it's going to be a metre. I, I wasn't sure I was allowed uh -huh. to. How much is it going to be a metre? How much do you think? Oh, it's got to be over the 35 bucks. Yeah, no, you're right on. Really? Yeah. And 35. that's... Wow, that is so for, cheap. And but considering what it is ethically as well. Yes. It's not just, it's not, it's not a cheap out of China thing. It no. is beautiful. And it's all processed here. Are you excited? I'm very excited. It comes in purple. <laughs> sure we'll get the purple. I might get a little bit of the purple. Um, but I will find us, we, you and I would have one, wouldn't we? What's that? To do, I want to do that, just the narrow off... <laughs> The thing you do where you have no, you goes around to and you just got the I've already, button here. I've already done it. And the button here, or whatever you oh, have no, done. Oh no, I don't know which one you're talking about now. You're talking about the big circle thing. I've done that's the not, big circle. That's not wide enough for the big circle thing. No. Uh, if you had a seam in the back, it would be. Oh. Okay. That sounded like the king then. <laughs> it did a little bit. Like oh. All right, so I'll leave that with you. Okay, I don't know where I am. But you know, to be able to get this. To be able to do wool applique on too is going to be fantastic. Yum. Yum. I feel like we're a little bit sewing in the crazy house today, ladies. No, it's only because you're in control and I'm being silly. <laughs> so you've been through. We've talked about. Uh, we didn't talk Perth. about the fact that we've. This has come up in conversation this morning, actually. Um, we did do a little bit because I've. Put curve bind a bias binding on a curved piece. Yeah, yeah, on some there. Yep. Just, I've had a few girls have been emailing while we've been live, and someone asked if this was a pattern, and you know, and usually go, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But actually, that's not what I said. I said no, but given where we're at now with the amount of fabrics in these teal colours and stuff we've got, it could be a little pony of course that we could run online. Right. Rather than a pattern, a really right. good demo on how it's all done. But what Em's been talking about with curved binding, cut on the bias for curves, that's what we actually did for this quilt. So it's, it is a quilt as you go quilt. Um, and these strips have actually been cut on the bias. But the thing about this quilt, it sounds impressive now, but it was make it up as you go. Oh, it was. But you know what? We learnt so much on this quilt. Yeah, we did. We did. This is engineering at its best. Those that are doing the applique sampler, here is your wedges for your sashing, okay? And then it's been cut, literally curves cut in to match up for each of these. 
what we found was to get it to all sit flat, which was the, the issue or the challenge, hmm. there is actually a little bit of a gap happening in here. It's tiny. a tiny little gap. Because we did, we laid them next to each other, yeah. but overlapping, and, and then the cut. rotary cutter. So they do, they do actually, they can abut. There's just a, but just a little bit, because if you abut, then it, it'll bubble up. So what we did, we joined them together on the back first, and there's a little twin stitch here down each side. So we joined them together on the back, butted up against each other as best that we could, and top stitched this half inch piece. Um, off bias, wasn't it? Because it was yep. the right edges. It's all bias. It's all yep. folded under on that side. And then on this side, of course, you had those stitches showing through from the back. So then we slip stitched on a wider. And it's a wider binding. inconsistent. So this is the same strip. And this is two fingers wide. And down here. Yeah, we just went all curvy worthy. But it, it's, it was to give it, here you can see, narrow, wide, to give it that Did all Did you tell the girls field. about the McDonald's? No, I didn't. We. I think we've told that one before. Yeah, we have. Yeah. We, yeah. You don't we, need to hear it all over No, again. but there's girls that haven't. We, we took the kids to McDonald's because we needed That was the halfway happy. place between yeah, Lisa's halfway house place and my house. To, to keep them happy and have make happy meals and play in the playground till we'd finished. Um, we were there for so long they asked to go home. Yes. We had done the play, the happy meals. You want some more chips? <laughs> you, want, you want a soft serve? Bad mothers. Bad mothers. But hey, we did win a blue ribbon. We did. That was the ribbon. That was the one. Yeah, You've got. You, we both got one. <laughs> the quilt lives at Emma's house because it's a lot safer there. She can lay her hands on it. But if it stays here at Chandler's Cottage, I mean, we have, where it would be. we have suitcases full of quilts. Um, they probably need a bit of a sort out. Every time I lose a quilt, I go look in the suitcases, and then I give up, and then I watch Natasha or. Maria, I like, oh, that's where that quote is. Oh, they've got it. You put it on a plane. So what are you doing now? I'm, I'm running around to catch up to the, um, the Lisa's angle. I don't think mine's as good as Megan's. Do you? I, I don't. I don't know because I, I honestly have never done my very first quilt. Well, I my, tried to do straight, straight. Oh, yeah. The Lisa method is actually a crystal long method. Chris Sorong taught oh, me how to do this. I'm getting caught on my pretend label over here. So, um, Chris taught me at the Stitching Post. There you go. To free motion quilt. To, oh, Chopanto. See, there's all these things we used to do that we just don't do anymore. Um, we could go back in Chopanto. Who's just sneaks at Chopanto? Chris taught me this method, and I said to Emma earlier, I was quite honest, I do think that, it's very impressive, Carissa. I do think that um, Megan's method is neater, and I do think Chris's or mine's faster. That, that's my theory. Yeah, because with Megan's, you do have to stop and do that little measurement. Yep. and get all of that right, and get your right angles right, and pin it all together, all that, that you did. And it is neater. And here we are about to come back to Lisa's angle. Which is Lisa's shotting, wherever I started, method. Okay, so... So now, yeah, so fold that back out there. Yes, now do you want to cut to... Oh, we're on that camera. I didn't realise we were on this camera. You switch while I was I did. walking. So now you need to cut this piece down In, far uh, enough. To just be above my stitching? Yeah, oh, the girls, the girls can't, can't quite see, see that. Hang you on. might need to go. If I pivot round to there, yeah, thank can you, you see? Yes, that's you where my to... stitching starts. I've got that little bit up there, that little bit up there to hold that yeah. leading tail down, and that's where my stitching starts. So, Lisa, you're telling me I need to cut it just yeah. a smidgen and short. The, and the, the, the trick is, you've got to be careful. You've really got to get this line to match up to that one. Oh, well, hopefully it's consistent with my quarter Because if you end up over that way, you end up with a little bit of a bulk on the yep. other side. So that's yeah. that's probably the main so, thing. So get him all in there and tuck him under there. Is this, am I on the right track? You are on the right track and that's it. And and I'm just going to, I haven't You're got my, all my um, usual weapons of mass construction. So, so for a quilt that you've spent three years making, do the Megan. If you're whipping up placemats for... Um, Christmas. Your Mexican. Um, <laughs> no, um, curry night. Curry night. Use mine.
So then you just sew right through and it's all in. Oh, my hover's not on. See what I mean? You've got to get yourself right back on that line. Yeah, right back on that line, baby. So, there. Have, oh, that's my leading stitching. Yeah, see what I mean? You, ah, okay. To, so that's where I need to be more sure cons concentrating. Because it's my wacky way. Um, but I could actually pull that stitching out. You could. So so that's come straight back through. That's your little hooky bit. Come off. And see when you see when you turn over that way, unless you're right on your first leader line. You can end up with that little bit, but you're right, you can just unpick that. Because that's essentially just basting, it's only those eight stitches yes. that are, were holding it in place to start. So the, the other thing about this method, and as I said, this is my quick placement method. Yep. When you, when you fold over, it, it, it's going to be a little bit bulkier than Meg's. Mm -hmm. But it, for all intents and purposes, it looks pretty good. Like that when it's over. Now, you and I... In our, our our beginner, no, no. When it's our three-year quilt, yes, we would be doing that by machine, and that's the front of our quilt. There we go. It's going to be. I know where you're and going. And you and I, I know where would going. turn it to the back, and we would stitch it down by hand. And we would until midnight. Yeah. Sorry, flashback. Yep. yep. Well, we've all been there, and we've all done that. But then we had this little epiphany when a beautiful quilt came back from. Mother Superior and the quilt had ah, been from Heather at Superior Threads, yes. Front and back. And we went, okay. So we played until we worked it out. And we did, and, and to, for us it's still a method that we always stop and think. Uh, you know, Which I've way? made things recently that I decided, oh, for example, not finished. Some warrant the, the time and some don't. I could have been standing here doing this. Um, <laughs> I. Oh. I haven't finished binding this. I decided that this would not look right. By machine, machine. By machine, I just because it's a smaller project. Yep. And also, for us um, doing quilts, we, for want of a terrible word, a commercial quilt. Yeah. So one that is one of my patterns that was going up and down on the walls that shows and hanging. Having that extra top stitch on the front makes it really sturdy. And in, for a quilt that you're giving to a child, it's a good yes. idea because yes. they're going to go in the washing machine. Yes. So yes. So then it goes back to kids' quilts. Absolutely. Do I've, put the I've already um, mended the binding on my brother's wedding quilt because I did it by hand, and we slept under it when we visited not long ago, and I just sat there one night and mended it where the binding had. The hand stitching had popped open. Now, have you? So you're just top stitching now, and you've lined up I've a particular lined up. part of your foot. Yep, pretty much. But I'm kind of eyeballing. And also, as another option, if the girls don't want to eyeball because they want it really nice and neat, they would line up the edge of their foot yep. on the other side, and you can always move your needle across so you it's sitting right on the edge. Yep. And the nice thing about popping it on the front and look. You've sat around and listened. we've bored you to tears probably this afternoon, just having a bit of a chat. But get on and have a look. There are there are books, isn't there? There's hundreds of books out there yep. about binding. If you do like the meth this method, it opens you up to so many other options that you can do. So, for example, Megan Lancaster, she'd be sticking rickrack in there right now. Yep. So if you bring it over onto the front, with some rickrack tucked rick underneath. Rickrack. And if you Google ribbons, the Ricky prairie team, points. Ricky Tim's Tim. piped binding. Piped binding. It's all on by machine, but it has this extra layer, extra piece of piping that sits. Oh, are we still on this camera? Go this oh, way. No. There's a, a piece of piping that sits out there. It's beautiful. I've done it once because, and I only did it because I didn't know how to do this technique that we're doing right now. And I just explained before about kicking up that bottom edge as I approach the corner before I go round it. But the I wanted to do I learnt to do the Ricky, Ricky Tim's piped binding because I wanted a quilt to be machine bound. And I didn't mm. know how to do it like this and make it look right. But that's just another another so, machine. So the only the only con to this though Yeah. 
you this can way. see you can see your stitch on the other side. But so that you, would be the back. Yeah, that's the back of your quilt. Yep. So Unless you, you had narrower binding. But that's that's again yeah. something that I've written in my notes for today. Practice your quilting and practice your binding. Yeah. Make oven trivets, oven mitts. It, it gives you great practice for your corners. It yeah. gives you good practice for all your starts and finishes. What else have we done? Done that, done that, done that, done that, done that. Oh, last, what? we're not hung. Have you got time for hanging? I'll, you do, do. I'll do the quick one. Do the quick one. You too. We do. Okay. We do. Facebook kicks us off later. Okay. Um, good. So I left one, one edge open. Uh, someone said, oh yeah, Kathy said, is the texture of the same as boiled wool? Yes, Kathy. Not as rough. But not as rough. No, boiled wool kind of it's really has, it's, it's got smoother. It's got a bit of a silky smooth. It's smoother. smoother. Well, we, will, we will work on that because I just thought, I know it's left field, but I thought, oh, we're right out there. We were right out there. Okay. It's all on my couch and wool cushions. And what time. you can do. Yeah. So you've got a quilt that you know you want to hang on the wall like this one. <laughs> this is kind of an exception to the rule, you can't see the top, but it has an edge that much like this where it's wiggly. So this quilt has a uh, post binding sleeve. The sleeve sits up here on its own. So you make a tube, I've stitched it quarter inch, you cut your sleeve the same width as your quilt top and then you get out your hemistats. It's very casual, I haven't got my hands in my pocket, I've just realised. So unprofessional. No, but this morning I did two hours in filming for... Um, I know. I was in there sewing. For Be Mindful, for the Podio Girl. So if you are doing a Be Mindful on as our online club, your patterns went up yesterday and a little demo of me kick-starting Steve's went up this morning and then tomorrow I'll be putting up another one about stitching so just we're not sure we don't think you get a notification if we add to one of the subscription posts so if you just are on in. please just check in there's now a video there and there'll be another one in the morning and I'll just remind people on Facebook and newsletters and everything and then next month we got thrown a bit with the timing international podia company oh up yes. there down here all that so um, that will all be sorted Okay, this is a post binding sleeve. So we've made a, a tube. Tube. And if anyone's watching and you missed out on that in the special, that's the only bit that was left. We couldn't do the 25. It we was on the floor. That. No, um, it was on the a floor. teeny bit left. Everything I've used today was, was on the floor. One of the specials was if you bought half a metre each of the two ombre batiks. Oh, you've got a piece of this. 20 centimetres, 25 centimetres of that. And we didn't have enough for everyone. Oh. We're not so upset, but that's it. Block of the drawer. Sometimes little bits of fabric you know, are hiding in the, the selvage and the, the folds and you don't know how much is on the bolt. Well, we've learnt a lot since having that Flash new website about how about much is on the bolt mm. or not. Mm. Okay, so we've got our tube and this is our finished edge on our quilt. Now this is the back because we can see... Where's that rock okay. This is the back. Or oh, can I go to that one? <sighs> Sorry, it's just close. Um, the girls can see better. Okay, you so you can see, this is the back where we've got that top stitching bobbin, that's the front, and the bobbin thread from the top stitching is showing. So we would take our sleeve and we would put it here, and we have to stitch by hand. So I would be stitching along here, I would probably snuggle it right up to the binding, and then we have to bump it. What do I mean by bumping it? You've got to put a D in it. You've got to bring this up here. So this would be stitched down. In fact, I'll put three pins in. Ah, uh, Petra, yes, you can do that, mate, but it's it's not for the faint-hearted. I'm about to show you the no, other technique. Was, no, she was going to say you can in the ditch from the front. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is where you sit back and for relax. The and, and no, you ditch, in yeah. the ditch from the front for your binding, she's saying, like, yeah. yeah, you can, yeah. and the the Ricky Tim's piped binding kind of goes with that method. So he, it, I'm pretending it's stitched down there, so I've got three pins in there. Now you need to bump it up. So put your fingers inside the loop, bring it up here, and then 
either raid your daughter's slide hair clips. Gerda's here. Hello, Gerda. Sorry, I'm just sneaking this one. And then, so I've just, I'm bringing just one layer up. Well, it's two layers, but not the whole tube up. Mm. And I'm only bringing it up so far as it will not go past the binding. I will show you again. Yeah, because I hate that. Because if you have it above the binding, it when it's hung, you'll see the binding. So this is it from the front. So you can't see that the sleeve is sitting back here. Now I'm going to turn it around for you again. And here is your bumped, where are my fingers? This way. Here is your bumped binding. So there's room for a hang a a rod to go in here so at this point that is where I would stitch it mm -hmm. by hand along the bottom which results in if I iron it that's where it's going to be stitched down so I'm pretending stitching oh Emma um the team got in for us uh, Teflon mats for these oh. so if you haven't got it on steam you can sit it there all the time oh so they'll be filming next week. Cool. Sorry, that's the girls didn't even see what I was doing and was playing with the playing with the mini iron. Yeah. So now you can see there's our little D. Yeah. And the reason we do that, if I sew it down there, we've all seen it at quilt shows. We have. Just, just and then the white elephant in the room. Then we put a rod in. Yeah. I will show you what it looks like on the front of your. <laughs> Let's go the right way. You will see the quilt hanging yeah. with a bump in the front, and that bump would go right the way across the top of the quilt. And so, when so you the D lets it sit flat with the bump at the back. Okay. So, and you know, we it, it sort of goes both ways, doesn't it, for us? Because we we allow enough. We might only be using a really narrow little rod at home. And, I, oh, and then I we have decided to chuck it in a quilt show. Quilt show. And they say put on an 8 inch sleeve or a 6 inch sleeve. Big. Sometimes Big. in the US, I kid you not, the poles are enormous. Yeah. The ones we, we hang on at yeah. Houston, huge. Like they're, they're so structural they, poles. We have to do 8 inch kick up, don't we, for Houston? Well, we cut eight, I've cut 6.5 for these today. But my other little cheat that well, I we do... We do 10 for Houston. I think we did do 10 for mm -hmm. Houston. What have I, I've just chucked my other thing on the floor. My other cheat for adding a sleeve, this is the back of our quilt, because here's our label that I haven't sewn down yet. Here's my binding edge. I've sewn my binding onto the front. I put my hanging sleeve with my turned in edges on there, and I stitch that at the same time and can we come back to here? Yeah. So I've stitched that in. Where's my pretend stitching? Just while you're doing that. Bernadette, I luckily just saw your message about your Podia Club. Um, I'll get Cass to get onto that tonight for you. But anyone, if you've got any questions about your clubs or anything, please, please do us the um, courtesy and just chuck it in an email to info at Chandler's Cottage. Because Otherwise I don't miss always, yeah, like I, I do, I do miss things. So anything like that, please email because then I can just immediately forward it onto Cass if it's for someone. Just said something about the soiree too. Just forward it Send onto Cass, or it goes to Steve, or it goes to you, or it goes to me. Yep. Um, because there's, sometimes there's hundreds of comments. Okay, afterwards. so here's my pretend stitching where I have sewn my lab my label, sewn my sleeve just loose, I would have had my turned under edge there, in with my binding and then I can bring my binding over and I only have to do one lot of... Megan's preempted you on that. One lot less. What's she done? She just said that. Oh, there you go. I always machine stitch a sleeve in the binding so it yep. keeps stronger. Absolutely. Go, go. Holds beautifully. And then Should we just send all our quilts that need binding to Megan, then that would just solve everything. Well, she's got the so, good technique. Oh, I know. We'll just send it up. And there again, though, I do have to do the bump. So I would be bringing that up to here and getting out my little pegs. We have a lovely group of ladies that have been watching us this afternoon. Oh, May nice. I say, and some lovely names like Anita, um, 
that's here. Um, Anne Bancroft's just popped in. You know, Anne Hello, Anne. Jan's here. Jill's here as well. So it's been lovely. Okay, so there I've, I've pegged up my bum. Up no good. Yep. And then I'll push it down. Right. So that's this crease that's sitting here, that's where it is at halfway. But that down there is where I would stitch it to the back of my quilt so that you don't see it on the front. Yeah. Did you? <laughs> and um, then I've got my D again when I take out my pegs. Okay. Did you Did mention I? to the girls, <coughs> can you glass some water, love? Is this you? The nice man brought me a bottle before. What's in it? I don't know what is put in it. <laughs> did you mention, so you obviously you said to the, I shouldn't say that, Emma, did you kindly remind the girls that they must, mm. must have their walking foot on? Must, must have, have your foot. walking foot on. And the reason, just before we close off for the day, we're um, done, just, we're done. Um, I, I kind of purposely popped in the, the 570 today, which is, one of the Beninas that has the extra wide feed dogs, so it's nine mil wide. And these come with, heavens, I'm not a dealer anymore, it's so weird, isn't it? <laughs> um, they come with dual feed, and the reason they have dual feed is because the feed dogs are further apart, and therefore it, you need that little bit of extra help with a third little row of teeth interlocked in the dual feed to pull your fabric through. Uh, extra wide feed dogs mean extra wide stitches, means potential but also you can wander a bit yeah so a lot of people think that their dual feed replaces their walking foot and it does not uh -huh. dual feed is there to pull it through from underneath but your walking foot as it goes along it picks up grabs pulls through releases grabs pulls through and releases and it's pulling all three layers or multiple layers through at the same and, time and, and a much wider footprint too yeah and a much wider footprint so what some people tend to forget is when they're putting binding on it's just like quilting but it's more you've got more going on because you've also got the extra layers mm. from your binding in there as well so you've got to run your binding foot and the one thing that what was I doing yesterday I don't know. ah so eating uh, pizza <laughs> over the weekend when you went here the girls and I were making a treasure tote and making little purses up and and sewing in the frames and yes all that yes stuff. yes the so, stuff. yes, and we had lots of discussions, and there was probably swearing on the other end, I didn't hear them, about the challenges of sewing into the treasure tote frames. Mm -hmm. And I did a top stitch right around oh, the edge. Oh, okay, long. I see what you mean, yes. Position the needle across, and it just holds it all nice and smooth. Really enough. flat, and yes. just to push into that. So that all goes together gutter. really well. Yep. Now, when I was doing all of that, or what I actually did sewing the bag together, and I'm not sure if I mentioned it to everyone at the time, I loosened off my foot pressure. Mm. So if you've got a machine, um, well, we can't even get them with the camera now, but with um, if you've got a Benina or on, on your machine, what are you doing up at 70? I don't know, I didn't touch did it. Did you set it for... I didn't got your 50 it. on, that's why. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. it, because it, it said you can't sew, you've got to tell me what foot it is. Smart machine. It knows that Emma is has got her walking foot on, so it has increased the pressure of the foot pressing down onto the fabric as yeah. it goes, and it needs to do that with the walking foot because of the mechanism. So, so keep that in mind when you get to more and more thicknesses when you're doing your adding your binding into that as well. Particularly some of the some of the machines that may have been loved for a little longer than our new machines, you've got foot pressures in here on the end on a. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. I do you remember open that, the door that guy there. Maybe the, the 440 outside. as well, and you can increase your foot pressure. You might need to increase or decrease depending on the thickness and what you're doing. So oh, just yes, keep that in mind. You can do your overlocker too. There's a turn yeah. and turning on the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So just remember that when you're going through all your multiple thicknesses. And particularly, you know, if you're going to do what Em's just talked about now, you're going to have your quilt plus two thicknesses from your four thicknesses yep, yep. from your binding plus two more all oy, in oy, there oy. yeah so you just just keep all those little tricks be up kind your sleeve. to your machine be kind to your machine what did you do to mine today uh we don't we have yeah. so issues issues <laughs> mine was making a funny noise and then just back away back away I from don't the machine, her, her machine. and all, all it all it meant was take the plate off take the race out 
clean, found little little treasures in there, Pieces a little bread. bit of oil. Happy, happy. So would you also oh, recommend, you know, if you just quilted a whole big quilt, you wouldn't go straight and put the binding. We would stop, we would clean, we would get all the oh, fluff yeah, all the out from the guts. bashing yeah. and everything yeah. before tackling multiple layers. And then before I started my next project, needle out in the bin, in the toothpick holder, yeah. the whole lot, and, yeah. and a full pull apart and clean. Yes. Because you, you've done a lot of work together. Yeah. You need a rest. Your machine needs a little massage. So give it yeah. some loving. Benedict, don't apologise. It's perfectly fine. I'm just lucky, glad I saw it. And all it will be, there'll be, there'll be a typo in your email or something. Bernadette didn't get her email notification about oh, that she's Podia, Podia. So there'll just be something. Okay. Don't worry. All right, we're all good. We're good. I, we've we've labelled with two we apples. <laughs> we've bound, and now we're hung. Hung, drawn, and quartered. That's what I was thinking at the same time. Oh, we did the drawing on the on the um, label. Yeah. Can you get the rain outside? It's bucketing down here. Do I need a boat to get home? You're going to need a boat to get home. You will. All right. Well, listen. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. I had fun in and out of the room. I love it when you do the show and I just get to be silly for the day. Right. Um, now, there's still serious talk. There's still two banners scrolling through on the top of the website. One's from um, Easter Monday sale. I had a little bit of a sneak peek while Em was on and I was out of the room. There are still lots and lots of specials there because the, the things that I did put up yesterday, I, there were some things I was very honest that there's only three. All right. But some of the fabrics we actually had a lot. Quite a lot of you know, them. remember like this one? I told the girls that I had a stack of that because oh, yeah, it was going to be the Japanese, that the, was a the geishas, the geishas sashing, and now I've changed my mind. Yeah, that was a lot. I know. So we've still but got it's yum. It's yummy. Um, there's, so there's still a lot of specials there, and these are the new ones under today's banner. And then if you look at the Easter sale one as it goes through and click on that, it will bring everything up that's still on sale. And that sale will end at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning because Stephen has gone 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. He will walk in the door. And, and he'll turn it off. And he, Well, he will. Mm. And he'll also start orders because we told everyone we were happy to combine orders when and do order, refunds yeah. on shipping and things. Mm -hmm. So if you decide to buy something now and then you wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and go, I need, I need a real cotton or I need some 80 or 90 needles, just please order them because you, you'll pay for your postage then, but Steve will combine it all for you tomorrow morning and or refund for you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be back Saturday morning, Saturday morning, earlier than later, because we are just, we're halfway through sending out the Be Mindful kits. Cool. Clubs have all gone. We're going to finish those off tomorrow. And um, yeah, I'm just easing off a bit because I'm working on applique sampling and stuff. So. Okay. I'll be back Saturday morning. There's new fabrics arriving too. Again. More? More. I'm sure there I've seen some out there today that yeah, weren't they here. just keep coming. They do. All right, everyone, thank you very much. Thank you, Emma. It was good fun. Is that telly Sally enough? Yeah, thank, thank you, you, Emma. And thank you. Are you back next Tuesday, Emma? I don't know. Am I back next Tuesday? <laughs> Can I play again? Can, can I play again? Can I come and play for the the, well, the, um, the Mercedes next week? The, the, no, the, 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 the sale of the century. Sale of century. No. Can I come back and play next week, Tony? You come back and play next week on Tuesday. Okay. It's a double feature week next week because then I've got Margaret in the building Wednesday. Wednesday. It's going to be a busy week. Okay. All right, so please also try booking.com. Please get your soiree tickets booked. I, you know, can we'll I go, come? please, please. You're there. Did you? Em's, all the, Em's there as well. She will greet you at the door. Oh. I'm going to give you a new clipboard and everything. Oh. Um, you know, we say, please, please come. And then... And then we go, oh my and God, they're, they're all coming. They're all coming. And, but then I don't want anyone to miss out either. Yes. So uh, if you've got any questions about it, you know where to find us. All right? Send us now. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.